welcome to the Spy Collection. I'm Anastasios and this time we'll have a look at the Soviet panoramic camera that was also used by the KGB and has quite a unique history. Panoramic cameras were more popular in the Soviet Union than the West during the Cold War era and this is a prime example of that. This is the leather case of the camera which is mainly to protect it. The case has a metal frame with a camera mounted on it via this tripod screw. You can use the camera both with and without the leather case. Let's remove it so it's clearer how it works. Here we have the serial number. The first two digits tells us that this specific one is from 1960. In total, only 16,662 were ever produced and very few can be found today. The first series, known as Model 1, was produced from 1958 to 1960 and the Model 2 was from 1960 and until 1967. This here is Model 1. The easiest way to identify this is the single arm lever. Model 2 had double. On the controls, this is a legend for those two small levers that depending on their position control the shutter speed. This is a bubble level to make sure the camera is sitting flat, very important in panoramic photos. This is the winding mechanism the arming handle and the shutter release button. Finally, it has a sighting system to help you aim. Now what differentiates this from traditional analog cameras is that it takes panoramic photos. Its secret is on its moving lens. See this. In case you didn't notice what happened, instead of a single exposure of the film, the lens rotates 180 degrees, capturing multiple exposures. Specifically, on a 35mm film designed for 36 normal frames, this camera only takes 12. Basically, 3 frames for each photo. Let me do it manually for you so you can get a better idea of this unique operating mechanism. Here you can see the lens exposing multiple frames of the film. Next, the two clamps on the sides are used to open the camera body so you can replace the film cartridge. The film is placed on those drums and when it's installed it's installed in this curved manner. With each shutter release, here is how the camera captures three frames. Normally you'd have three film frames exposed and once you press the release button, this is how they get exposed to the lens. Let me do that slowly for you. And one more time. Okay. 
Clearly, such a camera could have practical applications for surveillance operations of the KGB, especially to capture large objects or facilities. But I intentionally left out a key piece of its history for this point. Many of you might know this person, Fedor Tokarev, the designer of the Tokarev pistols. What you probably don't know is that this strange panoramic lens design was also his. Actually, even the name of the camera is from his initials, FT2, Fedor Tokarev 2. Tokarev was French with Joseph Stalin and an influential figure in Soviet government and military circles. So, although this FT2 camera wasn't the best possible design, he managed to get the KMZ, the Krasnogorsky Mechanice Zavod, or Krasnogorsk Mechanical Works, to produce it. At the time, KMZ was the main supplier of optical devices in the Soviet military and the KGB, and this is how that not so perfect camera ended up in the inventories of the KGB. Actually, in February 2021, the KGB Museum in New York closed and put its collection for auction. Among them we find the export version of this camera. You can see that this was the export variant from the English instead of the Cyrillic label. Its description in the KGB Museum was the camera has a KGB secret lens. The product of the constructor Fedor Tokarev, who created the TT pistol. Joseph Stalin's friend. Due to their friendly relationship, it was released very quickly on the market. But the camera was not comfortable. Therefore, when the Gorizon appeared, it quickly got around FT2. We will look at its successor, the Gorizon, in a separate video. In the meantime, we hope that this added another piece to the puzzle of KGB surveillance devices from the Cold War era and demonstrated once again how nothing is as it seems.